Hello my friends and welcome back here in Microsoft's Flight Simulator. After quite a long time we are back in the sim with a new full flight tutorial. And this time we are going to cover the uh, Boeing 787 by Asobo. But to be precise we are going to fly the Kuro Boeing 787-8. So the smallest version of this Dreamliner that is uh, available. And once again this will be a quick little tutorial, not the most advanced one, not the most uh, in-depth tutorial that you can find maybe. But still I wanted to share it right here. And once again we are going to perform a real world flight served by Air Europa this time. And this flight will take us from Madrid Barajas, Lima Echo, Mike Delta down to Tenerife North. So I hope I'm pronouncing this correctly, Tenerife North and the identifier is Golf Charlie X-Ray Oscar. So let us begin right here. And here we are in the cockpit of the 787 by Boeing. And as you can see, it's very modern with all those large screens down there. Not many analog gauges here anymore. And as usual, we are going to start at the overhead and turning on the battery that you can find right there. And also by default, all the external powers are connected to the aircraft. We are going to take the forward right one. It doesn't make much sense to connect them all right here. IRS switches on for IRS alignment. This FD door power switch comes on and the window heats. And also the passenger signs can already be switched to auto. Nav light on. So most of the systems in this airline and this very modern one are automated. You can switch them pretty much on whenever you want. Also the packs get switched on to the auto mode right now, even though the APU is not running yet, not providing any bleed air for air conditioning. Also, I like to switch the ICAS display to the right side and on the right side of the captain's MFD you can toggle through all the uh, system pages of the aircraft. And also, you can display the uh, FMC right there. Checklists, we are going to have a look at that later. Down here on the pedestal you have three more display units that can serve different functions. And I like to switch the uh, left one to the VHF radios the center one to the transponder and the right one also to VHF radios. Many of the functions that are available in the real aircraft do not work in this uh, version right here in MSFS, even though it's already enhanced via the aircraft and avionics update number two. Also we are going to increase the brightness of the displays a bit and also the uh, backlighting of the panels that can all be found down here for the pilot and co-pilot. And also on the overhead you have some more lighting controls. And also the lower display brightness knob is up here at, on the overhead. Alright, so this aircraft doesn't feature an electronic flight back, unfortunately, because it's still pretty much a default aircraft from MSFS. So let us start at the uh, FMC. I think in real life those aren't touch displays, but you have to control them via a mouse device pretty much in the aircraft. So first of all, let's go to the index page and settings where you can set up some basic options of the aircraft. And then we are going to wait and balance where we can download our most recent SimBrief uh, flight plan data. So for the weights in this case. And it will take a second and then it will say completed. And the aircraft is already loaded. There's no need to push any further buttons. It's all done automatically and instantly. So let's go back to the island page and position in it where we are going to enter our departure airport, in this case Lima Eco Mike Delta. There's not much going on on the second POS in it page. We take our GPS position, pasting it into this field and this will start the IRS alignment. Okay, on the route page we are going to say request and this will once again uplink to Simbrief and download our most, most uh, recent route that we have created. And then we can hit load. And that fills in our arrival airport and also our on route waypoints. And we hit execute and that's it. Alright, we did uh, request boarding via GSX. So I think it's a good time to start the APU. Right there on the status page you have the APU information as well. 
we have 21 degrees Celsius outside. But there you can see the baggage incoming. Also, the Kuro does feature some better wing views. Better ones than the default 787-10. Uh, and this is our aircraft from the outside. The forward cargo door does open. The rear one, unfortunately, doesn't. Okay, before starting the APU, let's tune into ATIS right quick. And let's have a listen. We are using FS HUD, by the way, for ATC. And here we go. Adolfo Suarez Madrid Barajas Addis. Information Husky 1427. Wind 170 degrees at 3 knots. Visibility clear. Sky condition clear. Temperature 21. Dew point 11. QNH 1021. Transition. Altitude 13000. Transition level. Flight level 140. Landing runway 18 left. 18 right. Departure runway 14 left. 14 right. Advise you. So let us set up the altimeters. 1021 HPA it is today. Right here in Madrid. And now let's tune into clearance. As you can see, the TCAS buttons right there don't work, so the above and below modes, that doesn't work. Now let's start the APU finally. Holding it on the start position for a second, and uh, that will fire the APU up. There you can see the status, the RPMs are rising. Alright, let's go back to the FMC and we are going to deal with the sits and stars for this flight. So for the departure we are taking runway 36 left and the CCS4N departure. And for the arrival we plan to land ILS Zulu 12, so runway 12, via the Summer 1 Lima arrival and the Tango Foxtrot November transition. And that is now also visible on our route, in our route overview. Alright, going to performance init. First we enter the zero fuel weight that we can also see on the weight and balance page, but it's also auto fill out. Somehow the value isn't matching up perfectly, but whatever. So I'm going to quickly open the SimBrief panel, so we have a better look at what's going on. So we can see our reserves, for example. So it's 4.5 rounded up. And next up our cost index is uh, 70, so we are going to enter that as well. I think we have quite some strong uh, headwinds, so the cost index is relatively high. And we I also enter the CG right there, I don't know if that's correct and really necessary. So the current gross weight on the ramp right here. Whatever, now we are going to scroll forward to the takeoff ref page number 2, because we have to enter the wind information right there before we can use it in the takeoff calculator. So the wind is 170 at 5, and outside air temp is 21. Now on this uh, EFB that you have on the left hand side of the pilot, that doesn't feature many things that you can do, so you don't have any charts or, or settings for the aircraft or uh, loading or whatever, but you have the uh, initialize flight button that you need to push first, and then you can go to the takeoff calculator. As you can see, most of the values for takeoff have already been uh, copied over from the FMC. We're also going to set the runway conditions to dry. The thrust rating will be optimum, flap config also optimum, and for the enter icing engine auto. And the only thing that's still missing is the center of gravity, so 27.1. And now we can hit the calc button. And this will put out all the information, the flap setting, the V-speeds, the derated temperature, and everything. Now we can send the output to the FMC. And here we can see the new message for the takeoff data uplink. And 
And now we need to go to the takeoff ref page number one, and here you can accept the takeoff data. And the last thing we need is the CG right here as well, once again. And that's all the FMC pre-flight stuff completed. You get this green message down there, and it's uh, all done. One last glance at the thrust limit page, where we can verify our derated temperature. And also I'm going to derate the climb, because the aircraft is relatively lightly loaded and very powerful. But we are not done yet with the FMC. The next thing we have to look at are the VNAV pages. We have to enter our transition altitude right here. Then on the cruise page everything is pre-filled out and uh, correct. And also on the descent page we have to enter the forecast and enter our transition level, which will be 7000, so flight level 70. And we can request our descent wind information, also from Simreef. So the Simreef uplink is heavily used in this aircraft, luckily. And there we have our wind information that we can also load on the climb page. So on the climb forecast we can also enter this uh, forecast. And that seems to work. So the VNAV pages are also done. The last thing we can check are the legs of the, uh, of the flight. And also check it on the uh, plan mode function of the MFD. So, so this rotary knob isn't working for the plan mode. We have to use the push button on the screen. But first of all we have to get rid of this, uh, or we should get rid of the system pages. So we have a bigger image of our flight plan. We can change the range and then we can step through the waypoints as usual. It's the same in other Boeings as well. And there we have it. Everything is looking fine. No discontinuities and we have a working flight plan. Right here we have a drop-down menu where you can uh, enable several overlays for the display, like the weather and terrain radars and airports, VORs, NDBs, all that stuff. Alright, as you can see on the overhead, the APU is still running and the uh, external power disconnected automatically. So now let us set up the MCP, the autopilot panel. First we are entering the IAS, so the uh, V2 speed comes into the speed window. Heading is actually correct, so the runway heading will be 360 for this uh, northern departure out of uh, Madrid, Barajas. And the altitude we will get by ATC in a second. Flight director gets enabled. What else can we look at here on the system pages? Temperatures are set correctly, 24 degrees. Cozy and warm in the cabin and the cockpit as well. And we are requesting our clearance now to Tenerife. Baja hot clearance, Europa 9048, heavy gate, Tango 3, request clearance to Ciudad de LA Laguna, with information whiskey. Europa 9048, heavy, clear to Ciudad de LA Laguna, via Charlie Charlie Sierra 4 November, departure, runway 36 left, initial climb, flight level 210, Venice 5, Squawk 6551. Cleared to Ciudad de LA Laguna via Charlie Charlie Sierra for November departure, runway 36 left, initial climb flight level 210, then is filed, score 6551, Europa 9048, heavy. Europa 9048, heavy, read back correct, when ready, contact our office ground, 123.155. 123 decimal 155, Europa 9048, heavy. So as you could see, I dialed in our initial climb altitude, 21,000 feet. Also we got a score code that I entered on the lower display right there, and also a ground frequency. And the transponder mode is on uh, transponder now. So our MCP is now totally set, we are going to arm the auto throttle now. And we have to set up our trim as well. The takeoff trim will be 4.75, so we are going to set that up right now. And it is set in the green band. Checking all the CAS messages. Everything is uh, normal so far. 
So as I noticed, the emergency exit lights weren't armed yet. The switch is a bit uh, dark up there. You can't really see if it's armed or not. And now let us prepare for pushback and engine start, my friends. So all the hydraulic pumps get uh, switched to auto mode. And the engine pumps are already on by default. So the push buttons. Further, we are switching on the fuel pumps. The center tanks do not contain any fuel, so they are staying off. Auto brake to RTO. Doors are checked and closed. So let's go through the checklist right here. Passenger signs are on, MCP is set, takeoff speed is set. Everything is completed and verified, only the beacon is still missing. And it's right there. So once again the overhead is very automated, all the systems are quite automated. And that's why we are done already with the preparations. Also as you can see we can zoom in the navigation display very much. So uh, we see a lot of the airport and the aprons very closely, that's also a nice feature of this aircraft. The beacon is flashing and shortly we are getting pushed back out of here. Also we can already arm LNF and VNF, I didn't do that yet. So after takeoff these uh, lateral and vertical guidance modes take over. And we are releasing the brakes for pushback and now we can start the engines. So we are flicking the right engine start switch on the overhead to the start position and we can already flick on this uh, fuel control switch to the run position and like in the 747 it's all handled by the uh, FedEx systems it's a fully automated engine start here and another cool feature is that the uh, bleed air of the APU is strong enough and powerful enough to start both engines at the same time you can see these auto start indications on the ICAS Alright, the engine start is complete. You can see these green running indications. Start switches are normal again. APU off. So the APU can shut down now. And that's pretty much it on the overhead after engine start. Now we can set the flaps to flaps 5 for takeoff. And shortly we can do a flight control check. Cockpit to ground. We have a good engine start. You can disconnect. So once again checking the messages that we have on the display. Everything is awesome. The final thing we need to do before taxiing is checking our control surfaces. So we take the system page once again and the flight control subsystem page. So full left aileron and full right is checked. Forward and aft elevator comes next. And the rudder as well. Once again I like these wing views right here. You can see these huge surfaces moving with the flight control check. Quite awesome. And now let us request taxi. Now let's go through the before taxi checklist. So enter icing is checked, recall is checked, flight controls as well, ground equipment clear, APU is off, flaps are also set. And that's also the before takeoff checklist complete. Alright, we are cleared to taxi now. Let's do it. Runway turn off lights and taxi lights on. Cabin chime, why not? And we are good to go.
So we are moving, there you can see the ground speed readout. Shouldn't exceed 20 knots as usual on the ground. And I will see you at the hold short point of runway 36 left for departure. And we did arrive, it was a relatively long taxi portion right here. And we are holding short Zulu for, for departure. It will be a departure with a bit of tailwind, but also in real life they are taking the 36 runways now for departure. So that's uh, not unrealistic right here. And we are tuning into tower. Alright, before takeoff checklist is complete, we are preparing the, the after takeoff checklist already. So everything is prepared for departure, flaps are set, trim is set, MCP is set, everything is awesome. We only need our landing and strobe lights and we are ready to go. So down here we have the landing lights, taxi off, strobe on and wing light on as well. And of course we are zooming out a bit on our navigation display, so we can see our flight plan, our route for the SIT that we are going to fly. Runway 36 left, cleared for takeoff, Euro 9048, heavy. Okay, we are well aligned on the runway. So we are spooling up the engines now. And of course we can also enable the weather and traffic overlays for the display. There are also these three uh, quick push buttons. I'm not sure if the weather radar is working in the Boeing 787 here in the sim. Whatever, stable engines, and now we are going to push the TOGA button. And takeoff thrust is set. As you can see, the takeoff thrust setting is quite low, because we are not very heavily loaded today. Eighty knots checked. We have uh, five to seven knots of tailwind. And there we have V rotate, so we are going to pull up, and we are off the ground, following the flight director now. Gear up. Now we are at approximately V2 plus 20, that's also set now by the VNAV speed calculations. And already we have to trim down quite a bit, so the trim system in this uh, aircraft is a bit different than the traditional ones, because it takes quite a long time until you are getting your trim results. You really have to push the trim button for quite a long time. Madrid departure, Euro 9048 heavy. Charles now we can accelerate to 220 knots departure. because we have some speed restrictions in the city. So 220 for some more waypoints here, maximum. Euro 9048 heavy, radar contact, continue climb flight level 210. Continue climb flight level 210, Euro 9048 And we can raise the flaps now, flaps 1. So not raising completely, but flaps 1. In the speed window you can see now, so on the PFD, 220 knots is what we are aiming at. Climbing to flight level 210. Also we can switch off some, some lights now after departure, the nose gear landing light, the wing lights and also the uh, runway turnoff lights. We don't need any more. Now at 220 knots we can raise the flaps. 
So the aircraft is cleaned up now, gear up, auto brake off, flaps up. And we can engage the autopilot. Right here we have the center navigation view for the for the ND. Gives you a better overview around the aircraft. So let's have a look at the after takeoff checklist. Everything is fine. Flaps up and gear up. And also on the VNAV page, everything is looking as expected. Charlie Charlie Sierra for November departure at nine thousand three hundred. Climbing flight level two one zero. Take off, runway 2, right, American 240. Europe 9, 0, 40, heavy, radar contact, continue, climb, flight level 210. Continue, climb, flight level 210. And we did already pass 10,000 feet, so we can now also turn off the landing lights. Because the seatbelt signs are in auto mode, they get turned off automatically. Everything is good so far. So I hope you enjoyed this departure out of Madrid. It was relatively okay. Quite calm air as well. Unfortunately I only have the default sounds of MSFS installed. No fancy sound pack here. So the engines don't sound that amazing. And we already passed our transition altitude, which I nearly didn't notice, so let's go to standard pressure for the main displays and also the standby instrument. Alright, now we are climbing further, we are cruising at flight level 410 today, as you might have noticed during our FMC setup. And because there's not much going on during cruise, I will see you back when we are descending. And here we are, quite close to our destination. As you can see, we are already at 14,000 feet, so flight level 140. For some reason, the VNAV isn't working this flight. So I had to use vertical speed, and I think I will have to use it further towards the airport. As you can see, we have a new top of descent point here on the navigation display, but I'm not sure if that will work. But still, as you can see, you can already pre-select your uh, arrival HPA, so the arrival altimeters can be prepared. Also, I did already set up the minimums. As you can see, it's 2388 for the barometric altitude. And next we can descend to 6000 feet. Right here on the approach ref page, you can see that I also prepared the uh, landing speeds. Simreef gave us a landing weight, a predictive landing weight of 142.8 tons. And we are planning to land flaps 30, that gives us a V ref of 129. And we are adding a wind correction of at least 5 knots. And also the auto brake is prepared, set at level 2. That will be sufficient for our relatively low landing weight. Okay, and we continue our descent with vertical speed. On the VNAV descent page you can also see the, uh, the vertical speed value that has been calculated for the next altitude constraint. So around 1500 feet per minute, that's also what I'm setting up now. So we arrive at, uh, at TFN, so Tango Foxtrot November, at 6000 feet. That's also where the green descent marker is pointing now. And here we are approaching Tenerife Island. Very beautiful scenery right here. It seems that we will have quite hazy weather at our arrival airport. Alright, now we are turning after the Tenerife VOR, I think it is, Tango Foxtrot November. As you can see now we are at 210 knots. With quite a shallow vertical speed descent. And now let's also engage the rain radar and see if that is working. And indeed it is working as you can see. With this dial you can adjust the brightness of the terrain overlay and also the weather overlay if that is too bright. I think weather overlay should also be working here with the default MSFS radar system. 
And now we are descending towards uh, 5200 feet. Next up will be uh, 4000 feet for the ILS intercept. And also the uh, local barrows are now set because uh, 7000 feet was the transition altitude. And now let's enjoy the rest of the descent and then also the landing of course. On the so-called NAVRED page of the FMC you can check and verify that the ILS frequency is correctly set. It has automatically been tuned and also the course is correct. And now we are getting vectors by ATC, so we are entering our heading into the MCP and we are pushing the button that will give us heading select mode for the autopilot. And we are following heading 245 for now. Now we are at uh, 4000 feet, 170 knots approximately, and we have laps 5 set already. Europe 9048 heavy, turn left heading 165, clear ILS Zulu, approach at 4000, runway 12, report established on localizer. Left heading 165, clear ILS Zulu, approach at 4000, runway 12, report established on localizer, Europe 9048 heavy. Now we got further vectors for the ILS intercept and now let's try out the uh, direct to function on the FMC. So we are taking the CF12 waypoint which is the initial approach fix, paste it again on the top and execute and that will give us the direct to the waypoint and we can re-engage LNF and VNF and now the plane will fly us nicely onto the uh, localizer course. So now we can also engage approach mode that will also auto sync the heading to 115. Now we're at 150 knots, flaps 15 extended, and this white diamond is the ILS glide slope. And now we're on the localizer with glide slope armed. Everything is looking good so far. As you can see, we can see pretty much nothing in front of us, thick clouds ahead. So it might be a low visibility landing and we have to use the HUD, the heads up display, we'll see. Go around altitude will be 6000, so I'm preparing that in the MCP. And now we can arm the speed brake as well for landing. We have the message now on the uh, display, speed brakes armed. Okay, we are prepped and set for landing pretty much. Let's turn on all the remaining lights, except the taxi lights. And also let the cabin know that we are shortly landing. And on the landing checklist we only have the uh, gear and full flap extension left. And that will happen at the uh, glide slope intercept. Alrighty, there we are, gear down, flaps full. Our landing speed will be 135, uh, 134. Tenerife North Tower, Euro 9048 Heavy, on final, 1 2. Euro 9048 Heavy, wind 304 degrees at 1 6 knots, clear to land, 1 2. Clear to land, 1 2, Euro 9048 Heavy. And this is quite an amazing approach into Tenerife North. I'm also using some payware scenery right here. The first one, the uh, departure airport Madrid. It was by Latin VFR, I think, and this one is also payware by some company. And there we are coming close, also close to the minimums, and the runway is not very clearly visible. So we are going to use the heads-up display. Autopilot off. Auto throttle stays on. And now let's engage the HUD. I'm not a big fan of HUD flying, but it, it can be useful in this case. And now enjoy the landing, my friends. Euro 
And we are down. Reverse us. And here we are at approximately 50 knots. Reverse us off. When you are braking, auto brake is off by now. And we can stow the hutch. And exit the runway right here at Echo 4, I think it is. So the landing was relatively okay, a bit harder than I would have liked, and also the runway is very long, so no troubles right here with uh, decelerating. After landing it may happen that the aircraft spools up the engines again, for some reason, so autostoddle needs to be disabled now. And we are turning left for taxiing. So the after landing flows, the radars get disabled, flight director off, landing lights off, taxi lights on, you know the drill, strobes off as well of course. Traffic display also gets disabled. And speed brakes in, flaps up. Here we can see the flaps rising quite nicely. And we are going to start the APU. Transponder to transponder mode. And that was pretty much it with the after landing flows. And next up we will do the shutdown procedures as well, so I hope you stay with me for the remaining video. That would be awesome, my friends. Here we have the gate, Kilo 1, so we are turning right now. Taxi lighting disabled by now as we are entering the ramp here. So all in all the flight was quite okay. The only bummer was that the VNAV wasn't correctly working for descent. But you know there's always something. And we have a safe dock guidance system here for parking. That's nice. And three meters, two meters, and one, and stop. Parking brake set, seatbelt signs off, passengers can be free now, and we are going to shut down the engines with a few control switches and transponder to standby mode. And here we are, my friends. Now we can request the deboarding by GSX. Caution off, and next up the fuel pumps off. Window heaters get disabled, and also the hydraulics, the uh, enter icing, beacon off. And that's quite a nice turnaround state now, APU is still running with air conditioning on. But there are some more steps to do for the full shutdown, if you're interested. Let's have a look at the checklist. Everything is awesome so far. Parking brake is also set. And the secure checklist. That's what we're going to do next. So the external power gets enabled. APU off. And also the packs can be uh, shut off now. And all in all, there's not much left to do right here. So the FD door power off, IRS is off. Delta 
And what else? I think not much left, as I said. And that will be it for today's flight, my friends. After quite a long time, I'm so glad that you joined me once again. Thanks for being on the channel still. And there might be some more videos coming with further deluxe and premium deluxe version aircraft of MSFS. So I hope you will stick around. That would be awesome. Have a great day. Stay safe, everybody. And see you next time. Bye bye.